So I'm not sure where um, where the internet cut us off. Cool. Uh, but what, what I was saying just before the internet did cut us off was that the, the reason why we are having the forecast, the weekly market forecast, is just to show you guys my directional biases, the points of interest where I plan to take those directional biases, and the routes that I take to, to get to those conclusions of picking a particular directional bias and a particular point of interest. So otherwise, we are looking at um, Aussie Cats. I'm still just waiting. My, I know my charts have not loaded properly yet because it's supposed to be a structure here. But anyway, let's just speak about the structure that we've got here. So on a weekly, basically, we've still got momentum to the upside. After this momentum, excuse me, what we see is this nice, beautiful corrective structure there that we've isolated. Corrective structure has given us our first touch, second touch. We were at the third touch from of this uh, support trend line, obviously, there. And we've seen some momentum giving us a nice push to the upside. What have we done? We've kind of sort of retested these previous highs there. We have not made a new higher high. We'll see that on a lower time frame. We've not made a new higher high. But at least what we can see is that we've came up to this area here to retest over there. So basically, from a weekly, what we're going to look at is the most important piece of information that we've got this previous low that we've broken below and we've broken back above. So obviously, it can function as a retest area. Sorry, guys, I'm not sure how much how much you guys missed or where the network cut us off, but I see, okay, maybe it's just a typical issue of the day that the network is just unstable, but I do apologize. Um, but otherwise, I think where I was, was just explaining to you guys that we've just taken into account the important information, which is this low that we've broken below, broken back above, and we can obviously come back at a later point in time to retest. So what we're going to do is we're going to just have a look at what these weekly candlesticks, obviously the week before last and as well as last week, we can see week before last, we've got a nice pin over there, obviously rejecting this level of structure over here. And last week, we can see a lot of momentum, but we have not moved anyway. So all we're going to be doing over here is simply taking into account the fact that we are failing to break and close below this level of structure here from a weekly. We do understand that someone somewhere in the world is to some degree willing to buy, or at least someone is closing profits on a sell, whatever the case is. There is some buyers somewhere in this area here. So going down on a daily, obviously, we'll just take into account whatever most recent daily information we've got. We already understand where we are within the overall structure, and that's kind of the important things. We want to make sure that as we're dropping down uh, the time frames from these high time frames down to the lower time frames, what we're trying to gather is we're trying to get context as to what's going on. Yes, what's going on? How is the market doing whatever it's doing? But also, where are we within the structure? Can we make the decisions that we plan to make on a smaller time frame with good enough probabilities of us seeing as well? Not just smaller time frame traders, but as well as the higher time frame traders also being involved in the moves that we're looking at. Because what we want to do is we want to let winners run and obviously cut losers short. So in that process of waiting, letting winners run, higher time frame traders are the traders that are going to let prices run for extended periods of time, not lower time frame traders. So that's kind of... I'm just going to go straight to sharing the screen. Every time Zoom cuts us off, I'll just continue from where we left off, guys, from where I left off. So anyway, daily, what we have here is obviously that nice retest of this previous highs over here, these previous highs over here. And obviously, you guys can see that, yes, we didn't really move aggressively to the upside, but we're still not really moving aggressively to the downside. So there is some sort of a corrective structure or some sort of corrective price action happening inside of here. The most important things that we can highlight for ourselves is that we've got extreme lows down there. Um, let's also just delete this for ourselves over here. And as well as we've got extreme highs over here. So obviously, there's extreme lows. There's our extreme highs. The closer we get to these lows here, the more we want to be biased. Obviously, the closer we get to these resistance areas up there, the more we want to be sellers. We also do understand that we are seeing from a high time frame from, from a weekly. We are seeing, or last week at least, the week before last, we saw a nice rejection from buyers being involved in this area. And obviously, last week, we saw no movement at all. So what we want to do is we want to function off that higher time frame information and rather be looking for bullish momentum than bearish momentum. Because where are we within the structure? We're at that weekly support trend line, which obviously we can't sell into a support. So let's just wait for this chart to load. I hope the network is not going to cut us off again. 
cool. There we go. Charts are loaded. So otherwise, coming down to a four hour, what we can do is just isolate whatever structure we've got there. We can clearly see most recent four hour structure is in some sort of a downtrend. So all I'm going to do for myself is just isolate whatever resistance I have here, just taking into account whatever extreme highs I've got there, just trying to make sense of the overall structure. Also, if I look left and I look at the structure, now let's look at the structure just so that we don't confuse ourselves and say this is more important than this. We want, we want to conclude as to which, which support do we use. When we're drawing our support trend line, are we drawing it like this or are we drawing it like this? This is where we go back to the basics and we go just straight back to the basics, high highs and higher lows. If we look at the overall structure, price came from down low, right? We created some sort of a high, we created some sort of a low. Where's the next high to have been formed? after this low was created, it's this high here. Where's the next low to have been formed after this high has been created? The next low that has broken a new low or the previous low is this low over here. So that means for me, my extreme levels of structure in terms of support is going to be this support and obviously this support. Those two count as my extreme lows in this case. So let's just go back there. We take into account obviously our extreme lows as well. And you guys do see that we have the potential to create some sort of a nice, beautiful descending structure. Now, if we have a look here, can we find any nice momentum shift? No, we can't find any momentum shift inside of there. So anyway, all we'll have to do for us to be able to trade Aussie CAD with good probabilities is we have a low over here. We've got a point of interest being our support trend line. All we're waiting for is just simple price action. Once price action has violated this low and given us a new lower low, we can look for reversal structures down low. Or if we don't find double bottoms, inverse head and shoulders, whatever reversal structure that gives us bullish bias price action, if we don't find that below the support trend line, all we wait for is momentum to give us that push above the support. And we wait for the continuation structure obviously as a reduced risk entry. So I am bullish. All I'm waiting for is a nice, beautiful third touch of structure, simple setup below the support, reversal structures, above that support, continuation structures, and we're nice and bullish. Anyway, let's go on to Aziz's strength. Go up to the higher time frames. Let me go into the chats and see. Kindly share the recording link and please unblock us in the groups. Uh, block anyone with funny language. <laughs> okay, no stress, no stress. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> okay, cool. So going into Aussie Swiss Frank, I'm going to be very quick with Aussie Swiss Frank because I don't think I'm going to be making a lot of decisions next week. But anyway, on a daily, so basically coming into things, just looking at the most recent structure, just so that we don't waste a lot of time, since I'm not going to be making any big decisions on this pair. Long story short, we're at support now. Even if we wanted to be sellers in continuation of whatever momentum we have there, we can't sell into the support. So obviously the only option we do have right now, considering where price action is, is to be biased. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Our only option is to be biased, right? Because we're at support. Otherwise, we do see a lot of momentum coming towards the support, meaning that if we want to be biased, we've got to wait for structure to change and reverse. Either we want to see momentum to the upside, or we want to see a reversal structure forming that gives us a reason to want to buy into all of these sellers that are clearly evident in the market right now. So all I'm gonna do is exercise patience. As this is frank, until I see reversal structures or any signs of bullishness, I'm going to be just hanging 10. Otherwise, downside continuation, we still need to exercise patience because we still gotta wait for a nice break and retest below this support over here. Obviously, most recent support that we do see uh, being violated by price, we obviously need to wait for price action to come back and retest if we wanna find some downside continuation. So for me, as this is frank, not much I'm going to do until I see structure, either reversal structure down low, or we come up and give us a nice continuation structure off there for downside. So that's why I've got nothing here. We're not planning to do anything on Aussie strength next week unless something interesting happens. Let's go on to some AJ, a little bit more interesting pairs. Cool, let's just wait for this chart to load. So quick summary of the tags there, guys. Obvious, any tag that has a nice blue, whatever, a nice blue tag there, we're looking for buys on. Anything that has a purple tag, we're looking to sell. And anything that has an orange tag, we're looking to not do anything. Obviously, we're waiting for setups either in both directions or we're not doing anything on those pairs. 
Um, but yeah, let's just go into some AJ. <clears throat> Trying to let my structure just um, develop there. But otherwise, while my charts are still loading, let's just talk about it quickly. So basically, high time frame, we've got this nice ascending structure there. You guys can see this is a structure that's forming at the third touch of this overall um, weekly ascending structure. But coming into the important information over here, obviously, you guys can see this nice ascending structure that's forming there. Um, I know I have isolated it, so you guys will see when my charts do finally load. But just be proactive and keep going. What we do have here is a nice resistance area there. And if we look at just the weekly structure, we can see a week before last, we broke and closed above this uh, level of resistance over there. And obviously, last week, we broke and closed below this structure. So we can clearly see corrective price action, price breaking above a level of structure, and obviously closing back below. Here again, breaking above, closing back below. So nice, beautiful ascending structure over there. Um, why are my charts taking so long to load? Jeez. Let me go to AU, because I don't want to I don't want to draw structure and then the charts load, and then we have a whole big mess from the old structure I drew plus this new structure. Okay, cool. We're back. I have no idea how long um, you guys were off for, but I'll just continue from where, where, we, where we left off. I do apologize that the network is so bad. Just is what it is today. One of those things. So otherwise, we do have basically just this rejection. We broke and closed above, and obviously we broke and closed back below. So let's just delete one of these lines since we have two. Go down to a daily just to look at the most recent daily structure over there. So basically on a daily, like we did say, we broke and closed above this area. And obviously we are now back below this area. What we do have is on a daily, we've got this nice big important support. Whether you guys want to consider the trend line or you guys want to consider this horizontal support, or whatever the case is, what we want to see is we want to see price action moving away from this level of structure. We'll obviously go and see what the four hour looks like, but from a daily, what we wanna see is obviously we wanna catch continuations, right? This is a level of structure that we know has action can come back to retest at a future dating time. So all we need to see is price action moving away from a level of structure. And then obviously when we come back to retest a level of structure, we look for that rejection and momentum shift away. And that can be an entry trigger obviously to go short. So it's gonna require a little bit of patience um, like Aussie so Frank, at least Aussie Cat is giving us a hot setup. But otherwise, AJ, since we want to sell and price action is obviously giving us higher highs and higher lows in a corrective manner, we need to exercise the patience to wait for the structure to give us good probability sales. So all I do see here as a nice point of interest on a four hour is this level of structure over here. So obviously when price does come back up to this area here, that's kind of where maybe I would want to look to sell. But what we do want to see is obviously price action giving us this continuation and then we want to trade our next corrective structure. So yeah, patience, but anyway, we sell buys and we sell buys from here. Uh, yeah, the hot pairs this week so far just seem to be AUD cats. So let's continue with AU. See what's cooking here on AU. Since AU is looking so damn fine. Otherwise, higher time frame on AU, we basically have momentum. So some very similar to AUD cat. We've got momentum, nice corrective structure. First touch there, second touch there, you guys can see we are approaching a nice third touch of this overall structure on a daily. Um, if we do honor what we did say we're going to do in the beginning and have a quick look at the weekly the weekly chart just to see what the weekly was doing, see if there's any information uh, there. From a weekly, what we basically have is a low last or whichever week slow that, well, that was. But anyway, last week we did test this low, but we failed to obviously break and close below this previous low over there. So someone is there, at least there's, there's some bias somewhere on a weekly time frame giving us some sort of a rejection. Anyway, going down onto a daily, just looking at the most recent structure, we did discuss that we are coming towards a nice third touch over there, but we do have a daily descending structure that's given us a first touch here, obviously second touch there, and we can come down to give a nice third touch, which will also kind of coincide with our, our, our weekly low or whatever high time frame support trend line over there. So we do see that there's some nice probabilities for us to begin to look for longing opportunities from anywhere inside of this region. 
So let's go down onto a four hour and have a look at the nature of the overall structure, see what we can do here. So since we don't have any PLIs inside of this area here, things become, I guess, maybe a little bit complicated, but also a little bit easy. All we're doing on a smaller time frame or on a four hour is we're just looking at the most recent price action over here. Most recent price action, what we have here on a four hour is we've got this low over here, obviously, and this high over here. So obviously we're looking for bullish bias momentum. What are we focusing on? We're focusing on bullish bias structures. Whether this turns out to be inverse head and shoulders, if it doesn't turn out to be an inverse head and shoulders, it can turn out to be some sort of a descending structure that gives us a first touch, second touch, and a third. Doesn't really matter. We're at an area where we want to buy. All we're doing is we're waiting for a chart pattern first. The chart pattern will tell us where exactly to start looking to enter the market. So until we see a reversal chart pattern forming here on AU, we're not making any bullish bias decisions. Once we see that reversal structure, then at least maybe on a smaller time frame, like on a one hour, you can say, oh, there's a low or there's a whatever, and there's a small inverse head and shoulders. Maybe I can look for formation of a right shoulder here and look for, once you see a chart pattern, you will find an area of probability that reduces the amount of trades that you're going to take, the amount of losses that you're going to take. So obviously what we need to do, priority number one, is just wait for that chart pattern. Once we find that chart pattern, then obviously we'll be able to be bullish on AU. Nonetheless, we're at support. It makes no sense for us to sell into support. There is no risk to reward ratio to the downside. And obviously probabilities are maybe against us. Let's go on to some Susie Yen. So Susie Yen, um, not an interesting pair as usual. I'm going to be very quick. Yes, I do have a purple thing. I do want to sell Susien, but obviously a lot of buyers involved. I need to wait for a reversal structure here. So anyway, I might as well just take this off because I'm not going to do anything on Susien until I see a clear structure. And it looks like it's going to take a while since the momentum is still, is still hot to the upside. So anyway, we'll take uh, Susien off, but nonetheless, we are at this third touch. I'm waiting for reversal structures. I am still going to look at the pair. Once I see a reversal structure, then obviously I'm looking for some downside continuation. New Zealand dollar CAD. Quickly, oh, Swiss Yen, do we want to look at the weekly just to see what the weekly did? Because weekly we do have some information. Obviously, week before last, um, extreme amount of buyers involved there. But then you guys can see that last week we had a nice rejection of this resistance trend line over there. So someone somewhere is prepared to sell Swiss Yen, and that's what we want to see. What we need to do is wait for the smaller time frames now to give us reasons to then obviously make decisions on that sell bias. Um, New Zealand dollar CAD. So New Zealand dollar CAD starting off on a weekly. We just decided that we're going to always be focusing on the most recent price action. We've got a low. We're at the low. We can see that last week we've got a nice doji, but we did nonetheless reject off this previous um, low that we have, swing low that we have there on a weekly. So coming down to a daily. On a daily, what we can see is that as price action, we saw momentum. This looks like one thing, right? As price action is approaching this low, we can clearly see that this looks like something else. That looks like some corrective price action. So we can see that we're always paying attention to two things. How does price action come to our level of structure? We can see we came there correctively. And now we need to be focused on what are we doing at this level of structure? And that's going to be our indication as to are we buying now? Are we buying later? When are we making this buy decision? Because obviously we had support, we want to buy. Nonetheless, let's go down into a four hour and see what structures we can isolate there if, if there are any. So on a four hour, what we're going to do is just take into account our extreme resistance and extreme support in whatever descending structure this is there. So grab one of those. Um, what I do want to do is maybe... <laughs> Maybe I just want to start my, my resistance from up here. I don't know why I feel like, like this. It's just too wide. Okay, cool. Let's just, let's just use the structure. Let's just use the structure because this was the last low. The last low, or at least the first lows that we can see are being broken correctively by price action. This low here, I can't say, obviously we, we retested it nice and nice and perfectly. So let's just stick to our rules and not make the structure suit what we want to see, but draw structures that are relevant to the rules so that we stay consistent. So otherwise, rules will tell us that we, this is the high that we need to use, obviously, for relevant information. Taking into account whatever swing lows we have there. There we go. We can see that, obviously, we first touch, maybe you can say that the second touch, third touch, fourth touch, whatever the case is, this is our support trend line there. What we want to see is we want to see buyers buying at support. 
what we do have here information on a four hour is simple enough low the price action has broken below and we've broken back above and we see the nice momentum there in the market all we're doing is we're waiting for price action to show us corrective price action and retest this previous low that we've broken below and we've broken above this is our area of probability that's kind of where we want to buy where we want to find our whatever corrective structure that forms there that's kind of where we want to see that structure terminate for bullish bias momentum obviously we're going to be looking to target these highs here and the end of this overall corrective structure up there. So New Zealand dollar CAD, I'm nice and bullish on this pair. Simple inverse kind of head and shoulder setup. Um, yeah, it's also hot, like I guess AUD CAD and AU. So I think, we, let me just see what AJ looks like one more time before we go on to New Zealand dollar yen. Yo, 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 guys, um, just, just give me one second. Can you send it, can you send it to me on, on Telegram, please? Because I'm, I'm in a session. Okay. Thanks, thanks. Bye, um, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm so sorry about the network. It just is what it is. We'll just power through it. Let's not go too deep. My jerseys are not cross, guys. It's not my jerseys. It's not that deep. It's just the network and it's just, it's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Anyway, AJ, yeah, all, all I wanted to do was just have a look at AJ. Okay, AJ also is going to require some patience from us. Um, so I guess it's not so hot. So AUD CAD, AUD USD, and NZD CAD are hot pairs for us next week. Otherwise, let's continue with NJ. See what we got going on there. Um, cool. So on NJ, basically, let's just focus on the most recent price action because uh, I don't want to waste time here. On this pair because we're not really we can see that it's, it's orange so it's going to require a little bit of patience from us all we've got here is we've got a high right price action broke above broke back below clearly yes we have been corrective and we're expecting that price is going to be a little bit choppy in this area so what we have here is on a smaller time frame we've got a level of structure that obviously price is broken and has not respected so maybe that is a, that could be a manipulation of a real level of structure only to be retested at a later point in time. Now, what we also have here is on a smaller time, we've got these inside highs and lows or whatever the case is. So what I want to do is on a four hour, I want to look at these highs here and see, do I see any area, any nice area of momentum shift? Do I see any bearish engulfing in this area that aligns with any one of these levels of structure? I see a beautiful bearish engulfing right in this area over here. Job 100% done. Now I know that for me to sell AJ, I need to find a POI or I need to find a structure that comes into this area here and terminates somewhere inside of here. If my entry does not present itself inside of here, then it means that I'm not selling a NZT, NZT JPY in an area where there's value. Um, and yeah, uh, I can expect whatever results from that. So otherwise looking at the overall setup, I do wanna sell New Zealand dollar yen obviously because of the overall structure where we are higher time frame. And this is the region where um, I'm planning to take that shot. So what I'd like to see hopefully is that we come back and retest these lows here so that we can make a proper a proper looking head and shoulder structure. You see that left, that left shoulder forming here, that head, and then obviously we look for that right shoulder and we look for downside continuation. Hopefully it'll be nice and picture perfect, but otherwise all we know is that this is a nice POI, we're looking for downside from here. So let's just make that purple instead of orange. Cool. Last pair that we're going to have a look at, guys, US that let's just look at the daily quickly. Reference some daily structure. So daily, we're still inside this overall expanding, descending structure over there. Um, <laughs> as Java was saying now, Java's Jav been crying and singing that the world is crashing and burning, man. Man, the world is crashing and burning. Yeah, true. But otherwise, daily, what we have here is a nice level of structure over there. We saw this momentum pushing to the upside. Within this momentum, we also have some structure. So all I want to do for myself, just yes, I do understand that this is a nice area where I can be looking to obviously take a trade here or whatever the case is, but let's not confuse ourselves. Let's just use the most recent structure being this low over here. That's, that's, that's the low that we kind of want to look to see price action stay bullish above. Otherwise, we do have a beautiful bullish engulfing over here. So we know that a lot of buyers came into the market there. So if ever I want to sell, 
I'm not going to look to sell anywhere inside of here because this is where I saw buyers being active in the past I'm at support. So already I'm preconditioned when I'm on the lower time frames that as long as I'm here in this area here inside of this daily week or whatever the case is, I can't sell into there because there's buyers involved or there were buyers involved in there. So going down onto a four hour, what I want to look at is I want to look at the nature. I already know from a high time frame that the closer I am to this line over here, the more I want to be a buyer, the less I want to sell, the closer I am to the support over here. Obviously, I do see that there is a lot of sell bias moment or a lot of sell side momentum in the market right now. So now, obviously, I need to go down onto a smaller time frame and conclude for myself, where is a POI that I can find downside continuation? And obviously, upside continuation, we know that we're looking to buy anywhere inside of this area here, in close anywhere close to our support. Cool. So going down onto a one hour, all I'm going to do is just look for POIs where I can find downside continuation. Simple enough looking for those bearish engulfing. Nice, beautiful bearish engulfing here on a one hour. Now I know that this is where prices stopped and someone decided to aggressively sell. Also, where did someone else decide to aggressively sell? Maybe somewhere up here. But what I want to look at is I also want to look at structure to find confluences going on here. On a one hour, what I can see in the previous levels of structure, I can see that, okay, cool, this is a nice important support, market bounce there, market bounce there, whatever the case, cool, nice, all and well. But after market bounce there, we came up here, we done something in this area, we created some sort of a support in that area there on a one hour before we moved up very ever slowly and then crashed like, <laughs> like, like Donald Trump was active on Twitter again. Gone are those days, guys. Gone are those days where Donald Trump's tweets used to move the market, unfortunately. Trading is hard now. Otherwise, we do have another break and a retest. Simple English, we've got a break and a retest area there. We've also got a nice momentum shift inside of this area over here. So all that tells me is that if I want to find downside continuation, all I'm doing is I'm waiting for this high to be broken, paying attention to how is price action coming up here, Obviously, when price action gets there, what do we do inside of this area? What we do inside of this area will either be an entry trigger or will not be an entry trigger. If it's not an entry trigger, we let it go. If it's an entry trigger, we add a POI where we see sell side probabilities. I'm going to be looking to sell from here. Otherwise, in terms of our buys, we are doing something that is very complicated and messy. So obviously we can exercise patience for those buys and wait to see maybe if the support trend line forms or whatever weird structure. And maybe we get a nice third touch that gives us better probabilities. But now for a buy, um, maybe if we don't see structures on a smaller time frame, okay, let's just not talk about a buy for now. For now, I kind of just want to look for downside continuation from here. Buys, maybe if we violate this low and come a little bit lower, then I can look to buy. So that's kind of the US 30 bias. It is purple. I do primarily have a sell bias. So if we do come up into this POI here, definitely going to try and look to, for an opportunity to sell um, US 30. But otherwise, if price action comes down and breaks these lows without coming up here, then obviously we've got to switch our bias and, not, and then obviously be bullish in anticipation that maybe price action still wants to come at a later date in time and tap into that area because it always happens. It never happens the way we think it's going to happen and that's just that that's what makes the market or that's what makes things exciting and that's kind of why in the forecast itself you'll never hear me going into or oh, i'm expecting this specific structure a double bottom at my support or because yes we can have a bias or we can have a plan but how the market will deliver this price action that we can never know because we don't know if there's going to be an earthquake tomorrow when this double bottom is forming we don't know if barack obama is going to die tomorrow when this double bottom is formed. We don't know what the circumstances of how or what the formation of this, what will govern the formation of, we don't know those things. So we don't go as deep as to say that this specifically is a thing that I'm looking for, but we plan and prepare and we say to ourselves that if this type of a structure forms or what I'm looking for is I'm looking for information that validates my bias at my point of interest. I'm not trying to buy somewhere where I want to buy, but I want to see the price action giving me a reason that supports all of this guesswork that we've been doing from AUD care to all these, all these pairs. That's, remember that our forecast is not a fact. At the end of the day, a forecast is not a fact. So what we're doing, forecast is basically just our preparation to say that if the market presents things in this way, then this is how I choose to respond. So that when we go into the trading week, 
we're not just doing things daily daily and just buying us 30 selling us 30 we've already got a plan and if market is not fulfilling that plan we're not just going to switch up and include a lot of subjective decision making into our processes that's that at this point should be very objective and not subjective but otherwise guys we're 100 percent done um with the with the um, forecast i think in terms of very important pairs that we need to be looking at it's just aud cat for the buy ad usd for the buy new zealand dollar cat for the buy and i think maybe us 30 new zealand dollar yen in terms of these jpy code pairs i think new zealand dollar yen maybe we can look at a little bit more than definitely more than swiss yen um but i wouldn't count in that i think just the, the three pairs that i'm going to be looking at is just ad cat au new zealand dollar cat and then probably us 34 a sell so indirectly, what we are saying is that, or a lot of the times you guys see that we do end these um, forecasts on a higher time frame. Since we're looking to buy ADCAD, what does this mean? This means that if I'm since since we we already concluded we're looking to buy ADCAD from these lows or whatever the case is, that means if ever during the week I'm on a 15 minute and I see a beautiful ascending structure or whatever the case is, and price is giving me a reason to sell, what should that tell me? That should tell me that by my standards, this setup that I am now about to take is a low probability setup because it does not align with higher time frame buyers or sellers with whatever I'm assuming that I want to take from the higher time frame. So it doesn't mean that because our bias maybe is bullish on AD care, bullish on AU, that if price comes up here, we can't sell first before we look to buy whatever the case is. Context, context will always be there and <laughs> Someone, someone says that common sense will always be there. Common sense will always be there. We'll, there'll, there'll, always be, there'll always be context in the market. And all this is going to tell us is that if ever I'm selling where I have concluded that I want to buy, this is a low probability setup for me because it doesn't align with my higher time frame uh, probabilities that I've concluded for the week. Doesn't mean that I can't do the opposite of what I've concluded because we've only stopped on a four hour time frame. We don't, we, we, it's not, we, we won't even bother going on to a 15 minute or five or whatever the key, because by the time I look at this market, 15 minute looks like something else on Monday morning at nine o'clock when I look at this market, it's already developed, it's done something. So it's kind of pointless for us during our forecast to go on to the smaller time frames. But what we discuss is what environment are we looking to find a trade or what environment do we want to trade? And where are we looking to find that environment? Which POIs are we looking to find that particular environment? And that one, that's, that's, that's kind of what makes a good, a, a good process, a good process. But otherwise, guys, let there be peace there. I don't see any questions there in the chat. Um, I do see Muna did ask to share the recording. I will do that. I'll post the recording up on YouTube straight after this session. Cool. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.